Today I want to talk about this, flash on camera. Now I know a lot of you hate the whole flash on camera look. Most likely it's because you're doing it wrong. The first thing we want to discuss are these domes or the, you know, stofans, whatever you put over it to soften the light or diffuse the light. Pretty much they don't do anything. I know it's kind of weird to say and, and hear, but it really doesn't. Well, I, got, I, I have to say, like, if there's a, a highlight on the face, like if somebody has shiny skin, you know, it may decrease that the slightest little bit. But as far as softening, this doesn't do anything but take down your light. Now, if you're in a small room with walls that are white that are close to you, this will diffuse the light or spread the light <laughs> in different directions and give you, you know, light from other areas, but not enough to make a difference. Um, you know, the bounce, yeah, that's great. Wait. So for me, I use, I use index cards with a rubber band on, on most, of the, most of the time. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it works for me. But you know, when you have a flash like this and, and you use something like this, this is great. Um, it does a, a really good job. It makes it a little bit bigger. You know, this helps a little bit with the diffusion, if you will. Um, and just that little bit of a tilt, you know, can change the light pattern. The biggest problem with on-camera flash really isn't the flash itself or, you know, the flat look. It's that we try to use this for everything. To, uh, we use it too powerfully. Um, you know, this should just be a fill for the environment that you're in. You know, because if you're shooting an event, you really want to see the environment. So, you know, as so you set up your camera first, you know, set up your ISO and your shutter speed and your aperture to work with the environment. Now, the first thing you need to do is not put your aperture at 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8 because then, you know, this much of the subjects is going to be in focus um, and you don't want that. You want more people to be in focus. So if, you know, a lot of times you're not just shooting one individual person, you're shooting, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, and, and they're grouped up or they're dancing or whatever. And just having one person or one eye of one person in focus really doesn't do a great job for your for your photos. So, you know, set your camera to uh, like F4, 3.5, F4, you know, whatever kind of works and set up the environment that way. So if it's ISO 800, it's ISO 1600, it doesn't matter. You don't want it to be perfect exposure at that. You just want it to be so you can see the environment. Then you can turn on your flash manual and trust me, this is easy. Don't get freaked out over manual. Um, and, and start your flash. Like I always start at one eighth power. Like I always want to like keep the flash low and, and one sixteenth, like whatever it's like lowest, just to fill in the faces of the people. So your environment's going to be already taken care of with your camera settings. And this is going to give that pop of light to the faces. That's your best bet when doing, you know, I love off camera. Don't get me wrong. Like if I could remote hold, I do this all day. Like, because I love the look of it. The problem is you really have to take care of saying, look at the camera, not at the flash. Because every time you do this, they're up here. They're looking up here and you know, half the eyes are going up here, half the eyes are here. And it, it's kind of odd in photos, but it's fantastic if you can take the time and do it. But like the biggest key, the biggest piece of advice I can give you for on-camera flash is not to overpower it. It's just to use it for that little pop. And try it just like this, without the diffuser, without anything. And you can turn this way down, okay? And it's gonna give you the same light as you would with this, believe it or not, uh, and it'll save power. And it'll give your environment look, and you'll like, you'll actually like the way it looks, I promise. Now, TTL and auto white balance, oh my God. So if I'm in this outfit and it's dark in here, and then my day is in white and, and, you know, it's dark and the same thing, depending on how close you are, okay? Um, you know, if you're shooting three quarter, half, half especially, um, you take a picture of me, then you take a picture of her, the camera's gonna adjust for my clothing and then it's gonna adjust for her clothing. So you're gonna get these fluctuations in exposure. They may both be usable, but you're gonna have to go through 
every single photo at that event and adjust back and forth for the clothes they're wearing. Believe me, this is the way it happens. And it, it, <laughs> my worst time ever, and, and when I figured this out, um, and it wasn't even, like I did a little, small fill flash, but it wasn't the fill flash that was like the issue. It was um, a graduation and black for the guys in their, yeah, and gold for the girls. Really dark, really light. And it went back and forth, not only with the, the, the exposure, but also with the color balance. Now that's the second thing I want to talk about is don't use auto white balance ever. <laughs> You know, set it and forget it. Put it at a Kelvin or put it at ambient, whatever works for you, whatever works for the environment, okay? Because if somebody's wearing bright pink and the next person's wearing green, the next person is wearing blue, the camera is going to adjust for those colors and your skin tone's gonna adjust. Um, it's just the way it is. So set your white balance to a specific. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. Like get it close as you can, uh, but if whether it's Calvin or whatever, so the mix is good. We'll get into filters another time. I do use filters at, at events, but in the old days it was easy because you know we used the eighty one and you know set this to our white balance and then it was just easy. But now you know we don't just have the regular ambient light bulbs. Um, uh, we have. LEDs and they're all different temperatures and like it's just so spread in different uh, venues it, it drives me crazy but we'll get into that another time but I just want you to walk around the house and practice this like take pictures of anything around the house and adjust your flash manually you know start at, at 1 8th or 1 16th and, and set your flash for the environment do this at night of course uh, you can do it during the day during the day too to get all kinds of scenarios but knowing how to use this on camera is the greatest thing you can learn because I, you know no matter how much you're a, a daylight shooter or whatever um, you're going to have times where it's raining out and or an event had to go inside move inside for whatever reason there is there's all different kinds of scenarios that this is going to save your butt knowing how to use this correctly and being confident with it and believe it or not just walking around the house and doing this is is everything you know, if, if you are lucky to walk into an event and have white walls uh, and you can bounce it or a low white ceiling and you can bounce it with a card, I hate the straight white bounce because you do get the raccoon eyes, but you know, using a card and you don't need something like this. You can take any flash, you can take your square head flash, literally an index card with a rubber band, it's gonna do the same thing as this. And if it's a higher ceiling and you don't, you just bend that index card down like this and it works like a charm. Please try this. You know, go around your house and learn your flash. The last thing, if you are shooting a slower shutter speed, set your flash to rear curtain, okay? So what that's gonna do is, you know, if you take a picture of somebody moving and you're moving with them, like the flash is gonna go off first and then you're gonna get the streaks. Yeah, you want it set to the rear. So the streaks go behind the person so it looks normal versus the streaks in front of the person. Again, play with it and you'll see what I mean. Um, but it's it's important. I always use rear curtain uh, at events. It works the best for me. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. I hope you gained something from this. If you have questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer them quickly. <laughs> if I miss you, I apologize. I will get to that sooner or later. Um, but let's learn flash, on-camera flash before anything. Um, this is even more important than off-camera flash, believe it or not. Because there's events and scenarios where this is going to be the only thing you have and, and what you need to use. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of flash you use. This is something so interesting you actually have to see it in practice to believe it. So let's start off with the first shot without the dome diffuser. Okay, so you could be using a Stofen or a, you know whatever kind of flash diffuser came with your flash. Um, and then we'll add the diffuser back on, the dome diffuser. And let's take a look at these images. You know, the first thing you're going to notice is they're pretty much the same. Now, this is straight out of camera. I didn't touch anything. But look at the right side wall. Without the dome, I'm actually getting more light on that wall than with the dome. You think that would, you know, diffuse the light more and spread it in, in, in different directions more? It doesn't. Now, let's take a look at the shadow. Um, I'll go in between. There's slight shifts because I moved a little bit. 
but you'll notice the shadow on either one of these, that it doesn't change. I mean, really nothing changes with this light quality. Now let's use that bounce card. Now I love the bounce card, don't get me wrong, but look at how much light you lose using that bounce card in the dome, okay? It's a lot of light loss. So I have to pump that flash way up to get it to where it needs to be. Obviously I'm gonna be using more uh, flash power, but it does soften the light just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And you can see on her skin, but down below here, you see how much light loss there is because I'm too close using that. It's top heavy. I have to actually step back and I'm using a 35 millimeter lens here. If I step back, pump up the power, it's a, it's a nicer look, a softer look, um, but yeah, I'm using a lot more flash power. 